Turning to business news now with Nicholas Poynton. Good evening, Nicholas. Yet another senior staffer at Air New Zealand has bailed out. What's been the reaction? Yeah, today Air New Zealand announced its chief financial officer, that's Jeff McDowell, will leave on his own accord midway through next year after the completion of a planned capital raise. Now, McDowell, he's been with the company for more than 20 years, but he's the sixth senior staffer to leave the company in about as many months. And this amounts to about over 100 years of experience at the company leaving or uh, on its way out the door um, during what is a really testing time for the company. And now there have been some reports of some concerns that stakeholders have expressed in recent times about some of the changes for Air New Zealand, the, the union representing most of the workers for the airline, that's Air 2, they've, they've expressed some worry about sort of the, the changes they've seen at the top, about less experience being there and what that may mean for some of the big decisions it faces in the future. But the head of the research, uh, head of research at the investment firm Fat Profits, that's a guy called Greg Smith, he had a slightly different take on what's happened. He says, of course, McDowell's departure it is incredible. It's an incredible blow for the company. He's a person who brings, who's had so much experience. He's previously served as an interim chief executive. That's before Greg Foran assumed the top role earlier this year. But he says the changes that they've seen at the top it reflects it reflects changes that have been forced on the airline as a result of the pandemic. It's it's had to resize as a result of its loss of international travel, and it's making this move to becoming a much smaller and domestically focused airline. He says the airline is going to be a lot smaller for a long time and that's resulting in the business having to cut a lot of costs and it's not really surprising that some of these changes have fallen on uh, people who are sitting at the top in those leadership positions. Interestingly, and this will probably be one to watch out for in the future, but Greg Smith suspects that there will be some further cost cutting measures uh, to be announced in the future from this airline. OK, what's the deal with this new financial services company that is, well, it's launched a new way for businesses to extend credit to consumers? Yeah, so this is a power company, this is, sorry, a company called Power Finance, and they've launched a digital currency payment service, which may be some of the first steps we're seeing to a digital New Zealand dollar. So this platform, it would allow a, 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 a wide range of businesses, it would greatly democratise the range of financial services that businesses can uh, extend to consumers. And it would issue what is called a power dollar, which is an amazing name for a currency, which is an equivalent to a New Zealand dollar, but it's backed by the provisional tax that businesses pay to pay to the IRD and it's held on their books. So he, if that sounds all like a little bit too confusing, the chief executive of this company, he gave the example of a heat pump company who has a client who wants to install a heat pump in their house but can't afford to front the costs. So he says that the company, they would uh, create a line of credit with Power Finance and that would be offered to the consumer who would repay the money through this platform. The identity of all parties, that would be verified. Uh, uh, all transactions would be uh, recorded and this would actually cut down on the opportunities for theft, money laundering and even th fraud. So and the company's chief executive says the power dollar, it's been established within the scope of current laws, it's got, it's, it's got, it's been, they've been cooperating with the Reserve Bank, with the Inland Revenue Department and although it's not an officially a, a digital currency, they reckon it's well on the way. And I think we can just take this as just another exciting example of sort of some more developments we're seeing coming out of that financial tech sector, which is really ch challenging the, the stranglehold that banks have had on the financial services that are often offered out there to consumers. And how have the markets been looking today? Well, our NZX Top 50 is up by 77 points to 11,975. Our own dollar is at 66.4 US cents, 92.5 Australian, 51.2 British pence, and gold is down $1.60 to 1,911 US dollars an ounce. Thanks, Nicholas. Nicholas Poynton there with Business News.